Hey guys, it's your girl Ro, and welcome back to another Uncensored Eats cooking video tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how I make my fried seafood boil. But before we go any further, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend. Hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. So, let's get into cooking. So today, as I mentioned before, I'm doing a fried seafood boil, and I am using different seafoods. So, I'm using... Butterfly shrimp that I just butterflied not too long ago. I'm making calamari. I have the body of the squid. I have the tentacles of the squid. I am doing fresh codfish. I got some U10 scallops, baby octopus, and I also had two lobsters. And I took the body part of it and I cut it in half. And this is what I did to it. So I cut it in half and I removed the meat, but the meat is still attached to the shell as you can see. So all that is gonna get fried together. So these are the seafood that I'm using for today. You're also going to need panko, which is Japanese style breadcrumbs, Creole seasoning, obey, Louisiana fish fry bread and mix, eggs, cornstarch, and all purpose flour. Also, you'll need a baker's rag and a sheet pan. Uh, you can buy both of these at a store called webrestaurant.com. Um, that is where I purchase all my kitchen gears. I'll put the link in the description box down below, so please don't forget to check that out. This is where we will rest our breaded seafood, and also where we'll rest our seafood once it is fried and done. The reason why I'm using a baker's rack and a sheet pan to hold my breaded seafood is to let my seafood air dry before I fry it. That way there's not much moisture on my seafood. Also, I'm using the baker's rack and the sheet tray together for my finishing product. That way my seafood is not sitting on just paper towel and it will also help all the excessive oil to drain out and to help keep my seafood or any frying product even more crispier. So my secret to frying chicken to frying pretty much anything. I always use 50% blended oil, 50% peanut oil. I choose peanut oil because peanut oil is filled with flavor. Uh, it also helps your finishing product not to be too soggy or too, or too dry, so it locks the moisture in and it gives your fried chicken, your fried seafood, fried beef, anything, a really great taste. Also, another secret of mine that I usually do when I fry, I always season my oil. So as you can see right here, my oil is hot by the way. I am using Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper. I have all spice berries in my oil. I also have four cloves of garlic that was sliced in half and all that is just sitting in there. It's heating up, it's getting hot. It's going to flavor my oil even more. Stay tuned until it's time for us to start breading. So let's get started. We'll start with our all-purpose flour and we'll dump some flour in here. You need three bowls or three different containers. There have to be a bowl, just use what you have. But you need one for your breadcrumbs, one for your egg, one for your flour. Your flour is for dredging, then you add it to your egg mixture, then you add it to your breadcrumbs but you'll see the steps as we go along. Also, you're gonna need cornstarch. I like adding cornstarch to my flour whenever I fry because it gives it a much crispier texture. I am just making a huge mess on here, but that's okay. So we're gonna mix that in a bit and we're going to season our flour with some salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. We are also going to add our Louisiana fish fry mix, and we're just gonna dump a little in here. I'll put the recipe in the description box down below so you can know what my measurements are. So with all the ingredients in here, we're just going to mix it up a bit. And we want to mix until the entire thing is combined together. Okay. Now that our flour is all ready to go, we're going to move this over. Add our Japanese style breadcrumbs in our bowl. 
this one is a, is very, very flaky. So that's what it looks like. It is your choice. You could smush it down a bit the way I'm doing it. Or you can leave the breadcrumbs the way it is. I like to crush mine down a little bit. Only because when I do that, it covers every part of my seafood or my chicken or whatever it is that I'm frying. And now that's semi-fine, I'm going to add Creole seasoning. Now my Obey seasoning. And we're going to mix. You always want to season your final dredging station because it gives your dish a lot more flavor. Everything is all about flavor. It's all about tasting good. It's all about making it right. And that's what we're doing here. So we're going to move that over, switch out, and we're going to crack her eggs. Here's a trick. If you ever get, I purposely added the shell into the egg. If you ever get eggshells into your egg, you always want to use another shell to remove the shell itself. It creates a magnetic field for some odd reason. I don't know. There's no real explanation to it. And it just scoops the egg right out versus using a spoon and it slides off using a fork. It's best to use a shell, just like I did. Let me do it again. So you want to take the shell to take the shell out. Voila. Now that our eggs are cracked, I am going to start whisking. I'm starting with two eggs first, and then I go from there if I need more eggs. I don't want to use too much eggs if I don't need to, because that's just wasting um, products. So you want to whisk your eggs until when you pick it up like that, it just comes down like a stream. If you ever whisk and pick it up and it's not streamy and more lumpy, you want to keep whisking. That means your egg is not properly whisked. Okay, so now it's time for breading or seafood. So we're just gonna switch these out. And we are going to put the seafood on here for now. And we are going to season our seafood a little bit. So you want to add a little seasoning to your seafood. I used a Creole and now I'm using Obey. Okay. I'm going to start with my shrimp. I have a big bowl, so I can pretty much add all my shrimp in all at once. You want to dredge your shrimp until it's completely covered in flour. Dredging your seafood or your chicken will help the breading process of making your breading stay on versus not dredging it and then you go to fry and all that breading comes off. So as you see here, what I'm doing, I'm dusting the excess flour off of my shrimp. I like to um my dredging first and then I move into my egg mixture. It's just my professional way of working. Now I'm going to go into my scallops. And you want to do this for all your seafood until every last piece of it is dredged. Onto my squid tentacles. When I cleaned my seafood, I cleaned it with like a little vinegar and a little salt. And then I put on a paper towel to dry and then I also blot dry then I remove the paper towel and I let it air dry to remove any excess water. The last thing I need is my seafood to be waterlogged and soggy as a finishing product after it's fried. Okay. 
Usually you don't want your stuff to like sit on top of each other, but I don't have the space right now. I didn't take out a bigger tray. I'm just using a smaller tray right now. All right, so now that our seafood is all breaded, we are going to start adding our seafood to our egg mixture and into our panko. So that's what it looked like. And you want to repeat this process for every piece of your seafood. You could add a bit of panko to the top and smush it down a bit. That way your seafood is thoroughly coated. So that's what it looked like. And I'm just going to move this piece of cod onto here. Now that all my eggs are gone, I'm just gonna add one more egg. And this egg should be more than enough for the remaining seafood I have left. breading is starting to become clumpy after breading my octopus I will change my breading out once your breading start to become clumpy it would start making things a lot harder to bread than when you first started we're going to do the exact same thing we did the first time You can add all your calamari pieces in at the same time. And the same for the tentacles. And with this, you just want to toss it around. And you do the exact same thing to the tentacles. Make sure your calamari pieces aren't stuck together. And you want to do the exact same thing to your tentacles. Oh my god, wow. So it looks like her oil is already there. So let me put my my thermometer in and check the temperature. Yeah, this oil is definitely above 350. The highest my thermometer go is 220. So it is definitely above 350. I'm going to remove my pepper, my garlic, and all my allspice berries. Ugh, oil smells so, so good. And we are going to start with our cod. Look how beautiful that is. Both sides of it is air dried. Let me just check on our little friends. Oh wow, look at that. Look how beautiful this looks. Oh, look at that. We just, oh wow. We just start by putting that there. 
wow. Look how beautiful that is. Let's do the same with the shrimp. That looks so good, guys. You want to fry little by little because you don't want to overcrowd your pan. So that is it, guys. This is the finishing product. Look how good that looks. Oh, my God. So let me tell you what I have. I have squid right here, also known as calamari, the 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 body, I have the tentacles, this is fresh fried cod, I got lobster tail, I got butterfly shrimp, I also have scallops and baby octopus. That looks really delicious. Really, really delicious. So that is it, guys. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend. Again, it's your girl, Roll from Uncensored Eats. Thank you for all the love and support. I hope you guys have a great day, great week, whenever I post this video. So until next time, guys, bye.